بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم اما بعد All praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who in his infinite wisdom and mercy has given us bounties more than we can enumerate. Amongst his bounties is the bounty of deen and the amal of deen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us his potential but we need to check in which avenues this potential are channeled. Generally, people channel the energy in unsure avenues, probable, speculative, some theoretical scenario, which is the scenario of dunya. The risk wama min dabbatin fil ardi illa ala Allahi rizquha that our risk has been stipulated, that is definite. As for deen and akhirat, we need to make effort and strive. From Shufi Manakibiya. For dunya, we need to make enough effort sufficient to show Allah we are trying. But our risk has been stipulated. So, something which is abstract, it is not substantiated or corroborated. Somebody says knowledge, a degree will give him sustenance. Many people, we have the best degrees, are overqualified, they can't find a job. So each system of the dunya is uh, speculative. Yet we encourage our children to spend 12 years, 14 years, preschool, pre-R, RR, 15 years, then further studies, 25 years of their life for a system which is dhani, which is not definite. The contrast here is not to to say don't make effort on dunya and don't strive in the line of dunya. But comparatively for deen, which is concrete, which is real, it is, it is tangible, it is the solid truth. Thus itself, whether it's ourselves as well, how much time, how much energy, how much resources are we giving for deen and how much resources are we giving for dunya? So a person make, should make sure we're not caught in this deception and the worldly blessings and the worldly barakah, the barakat is, is something which is paltry, it is trivial, very insignificant. But a greater need for blessing and khair is the year after. So this blessing is a blessing of priority, it's a blessing of we should give precedence so our Iman, our Yaqeen, our conviction is at such a level we haven't even secured Barakah in dunya. We haven't even secured Barakah in dunya which is insignificant what will be our condition with regards to Akhirah. So with regards to dunya, Sahaba, it was insignificant in the eyes. Allah threw it at their feet. Allah threw it at their feet. It was, it was such that treasures, tons of gold came in the treasury of Sahaba. So, and Amal, they turned to Amal and they solved their worldly problems. Amal brought the Barakah in dunya, which was, a, as we say, in something which is light, which is not of priority. Take for example as an Anas So he had orchards and his uh, keeper once came to him during a summer month and complained and said there is no water, water is very scarce. So Hazrat Anas did something very interesting. He said, Fada'a uh, bima'in fatawadda wa salah. He asked for water, made wudu and read salah. So normally our attention when we are faced with a worldly problem, where does our attention go first to? What did he do? Ask for water. Made hudu red salah. Then he said, Hal tara shay'an? Have you seen anything? He asked the khadim, Ma ara shay'an? Nothing. Then again he read salah, second time, third time. Again he asked, you see anything? He said, yes. Mithla janahi tayri like the wings of a bird, of a cloud. 
So he continued reading Salah. So yakin, do not give up. Sometimes we read once, twice, and then we give up chuti. But even though we take to the means, we should not, the, the, the speculative means of dunya, we should never abandon the definitive means, which is deen and the amal of deen. So he continued. And uh, eventually, this cloud burst, the sky became overcast and rain started falling. So, uh, Hazrat Anas radiallahu anh then said to him that now go and see where Fandur Ain Balagh al Matar. Where is it rained? So he went and it had not traversed the land. Faida hiya lam ta'adu ardahu, the confines, the parameters of his property. It had not surpassed that all the water fell only in his land. So when we're talking of Baraka, Allah has given us examples to understand. Otherwise, it cannot be comprehended. So while they were alive, they needed this dunyawi Baraka. When they were deceased as well. So there was a tribe from amongst the Ansar that uh, were fortunate to have the dua of Nabi Ali Salatu Wasalam. And when any of them were buried, then rain would fall on their grave. So one day, their freed slave passed away. So they said, Today we will witness the miracle, but in a, in a definite way where Nabi Alayhi Salaam said, مَوْلَ الْقَوْمِ مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ That the freed slave of a tribe is part of that tribe. So today we will see since we freed him and now is he part of our tribe or not? This hadith will become, will come live. It will be in real time when we bury him. So, فَلَمَّا دُفِنَ جَاءَتْ سَحَابَةٌ When he was buried, a cloud appeared. فَأَمْطَرَتْ قَبْرَهُ And it rained on his qabr. It rained on his qabr. So, not only when they were alive, but even when they were deceased, they seen the barakat. As it Umay Ayman radiallahu anha migrated to Medina, she reached a place called Munsarif in the evening, which was just before Rawha. But she was fasting the entire day and extremely thirsty with no water. The thirst became unbearable. And she made tawajju to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَدُلِّيَ عَلَيْهَا مِنَ السَّمَاءِ دَلْهُمْ مِنْ مَاءٍ From the sky, a bucket of water was suspended from a white rope which lowered the bucket, the bucket of water to her. It, from the heavens, it lowered down. She took hold of it, she drank to a fill. Then after that she used to say that فَمَا أَتِشْتُ بَعْدَ تِلْكَ الشَّرْبَ After that day I never ever felt thirsty again. Even if it was extremely hot days in midday while I was fasting, I never felt the pangs of thirst after that drink again. So Baraka, 14 were completed, number 15, marriage nikah. So when a person gets married, إِيَّكُونُ فُقَرَاءَ يُغْنِيهِمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ That uh, when a person gets married, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make that person affluent. وَاللَّهُ وَاسِعٌ عَلِيمٌ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most generous. Allah made that sifat to show we are knowledgeable of your deficiency and we will fulfill that. Imam Qurtubi has said that when somebody gets married with the intention that he wants to be chased, وَهَذَا وَعْدْ بِالْغِنَى It is specifically for that person who is seeking the pleasure of Allah وَاَتِصَامًا مِنْ مَعَاسِيهِ To stay away from guna and sin. 
then this virtue fits for that person. In Adwa'ul Bayan, it is mentioned that Allah has promised to remove poverty for a person who wants to be chaste. And the ayat mentioned after that is for a person who wants to obey Allah and stay away from sin. Because he wants to obey Allah, he wants to lower his gaze, he wants to protect his ch chastity, as in a hadith, Ya ma'ashara shabab, man istata'a minkum ulba' fal yatazawwaj, fa innahu aghadu lil basar wa ahsanu lil faraj. Because this is very apt for keeping your gazes low, nika is a means of lowering your gazes and protecting your private parts. So the priority here, al wa'd bil ghina innama huwa ala ta'atillah bidhalika for the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this promise will follow. For baraka, wal yasta'afifi alladheena la yajiduna nikahan hatta yugniyahumu Allahu min fadlihi that those who are chaste Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will suffice for their needs, remove their poverty. Ibn Masud say, Il tamisul ghina fin nika. That seek wealth and richness in nika. He needs to read this ayah. Amr Rayyan say that uh, I am amazed mimma la yatlubul ghina fin nika. That a person doesn't seek independence from in wealth. By, by the means of nikah, whereas Allah subhanahu has said this in the ayah of the Qur'an. Likewise, Abu Bakr Siddiq used to say, أَطِيعُ الله فِي مَا أَمَرَكُمْ بِهِ مِنَ النِّكَاءِ Obey Allah with regards to nikah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fulfill His promise مِنَ الْغِلَى From wealth and richness. Umar radiya anhu say, that uh, in a riwayat as Aisha radiya anhu mentions in Hakim Bazar, and Abu Dawud, etc., Ibn Abi Shayba, Tazawajun Nisa, get married, make nikah to women, get married. Why? Fa'innahunna ya'teena bil mal, because your wives or your wife will bring you wealth. So every wife will bring you wealth, every wife comes with a risk. So a person, if he wants baraka, then nikah, thalatha kullum haqqun ala Allah, Allah has taken responsibility to help these people. One of them is annaqihu yuridu al-afaf, a person who gets married, he wants chastity. So there was a zamana where there was barakah in nikah, in such barakah the nikah lasted for long. Talaq was not common, which is a sign of qiyamah, as it was said nowadays, the nikah is four years, they get married, the wife speaks, shouts to husband, the husband is humble, he listens, he gets tired after the second year, he starts speaking and screaming, the wife now starts listening, then the third year of marriage, where the husband and wife both are speaking and screaming and fighting and the neighbors listen, and the last year is when they want a talaq, the lawyer speak and the judge listens. Number 16, Exorbitant meher. So when the meher is not exorbitant, then you will get baraka. A'adhamun nisa'i barakatan aysaruhunna ma'unatan. That those women whose meher is not exorbitant, their nikah will be the most baraka and blessing. So nowadays, People ask exorbitant amounts and huge amounts. People don't get married because they can't afford the mahar. So in certain societies, very high mahar, whereas Mahar Fatimi, which is straightforward, simple, we should try to come closer onto Sunnah. Alama say the easiest thing in the time of Saba was Nikah. Today has become the most difficult. Saba made Nikah and Nabi Ali Salatu was salam did not even know a Sahabi was married. That's how easy nikah was in the time of Sahaba. Number 17, in Adam and Nikahi Baraka Aysaruhu Mauna. That to have the least elaborate 
functions where the cost is the least amount. So nowadays we need to make a mark to, to, to make a name, to become a, a, a name show. Who can outdo what? So just in, in the, the functions of Nika, we have gone so opulent and so wild that a lot of Israf, now this is just a Nikah where we're saying we want Barakah. We're not even getting into the music that is played in these Nikah, in these wedding functions, the intermingling. And the Sunnah is Walima, not the food. After the Nikah, the food is not Walima. The Walima is after consummation. So that's contrary to Sunnah. Then the intermingling of sexes, then the wastes, then getting into debt, then the show and the display on the stage, the groom and the bridegroom, and the bride, and the, the falamin, the, the cameras, the, the drones, the, the bid'at and customs, the bachelor parties, the pre-wedding functions, the Mandy nights, we're not even considering that. So we break Allah's command and we expect that the marriage won't break. Sometimes somebody is still paying off the debt for his daughters and sons in nikah and they already divorced. Eating on the floor, Dastar Khan is Sunnah. To share from the same plate is Sunnah Barakah. The food that falls on the side to consume it Barakah. So we've lost all the amal of Barakah and we're saying we got no more Barakah. One incident where on stage there was an argument about the shoe. The husband bought a shoe, the wife never wore it because it was a bit too tight or for whatever reason they argued. And the husband said, if you're not going to listen to me now, how will I ever live with you? And he gave a talaq on the stage, on the stage. Number 18, halal income. أَخْذُ mal min tariqil al halal To seek avenues where there is halal risk. فَمَنْ يَأْخُذُ مَالًا بِحَكِّهِ يُبَارَكْ لَهُ فِيهِ Whoever seeks risk, where it is halal, there will be barakah. وَمَنْ يَأْخُذْ مَالًا بِغَيْرِ حَكِّهِ And without halal, فَمَثَلُهُ كَمَثَلِ الَّذِي يَأْكُلُ وَلَا يَشْبَعْ There will be no barakah in this person's wealth. Likewise, not to have greed for wealth. So as Hakim bin Hizam says, I asked Rasulullah some Fa'afani, he gave me. Thumma sal to Fa'afani, I asked and he gave me. Thumma sal to Fa'afani, then he gave me again. And he said, Hakim, inna hadha al-mal khadiratun hulwatun. This wealth is very attractive and sweet. Man akhadahu bi sakhawati nafsin burika lahu fihi. Whoever takes it without being greedy, it's blessed for him. وَمَنْ أَخْذَوْ بِإِشْرَافِ نَفْسٍ لَمْ يُبَارِدْ لَوْ فِيهِ And if you take it with greed, there will be no blessings. It's like the one who eats and is not as satisfied. He will continue wanting more and more and more. It will not be sufficient. So Sahaba gave, Allah gave Sahaba Barakah. As Miqdad bin Aswad رضي الله عنه says that a stage came in the life of Sahaba where they used to relieve themselves only every two or three days and they would pass stool just as camels would do. So one day he went to relieve himself and as he was busy he reached a place near Baki Gharkat. He sat down to relieve himself. And a large rat appeared. A large rat appeared. Is akhraja juradum min juhrihi dinaran. It took out a gold coin. Falam yazal yukhriju dinaran dinaran. And he continued going back and bringing a gold coin until it reached 17 gold coins. So he went to Nabi alayhi salatu was salam and Nabi alayhi salam Asked him, did you take it from the hole? He said, no. وَالَّذِي بَعَثَكَ بِالْحَقِّ So Nabi alayhi salam told and made dua for him, بَارَكَ اللَّهُ لَكَ فِيهَا May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put barakah. So the ba'ad the narration says that فَمَا فَنِيَ آخِرُهَا Thus Allah gave him so much barakah to a stage where 
I seen bags of silver. What has it Miqdad He had bags and bags of silver. So not to engage in haram and not to have greed. I am amazed at a businessman that he makes qasams in the day and he accounts and counts his money at night. And a charger fajir, a, a, a businessman, is a transgressor, a sinner. Because a person compromises. Umar and us say, Malam yatafaqa fi deen. Whoever does not learn the Masail of deen, Fala, he should not. Yattajiranna fi aswaqina. He should not do business in our uh, business places. Sufyan, bin, uh, Sufyan Thawri used to say that, لا تنظرون إلى زي أهل السوق. Don't look at the dress and the tie of the people of the bazaar. فإن تحت because below their clothes they are and there's wolves. Muhammad ibn Shimal used to say, Ya Ahl al-Suq, O people of the bazaar, you should tell him, Suqukum kasid, your markets are stagnant and dull. Bayukum fasid, your transactions are corrupt. Your, your, your neighbors are hasid, jealous, wa ma'akumakum unnar, and possibly you'll go to Jahannam if you do not comply to the awamir of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Ibn Abbas used to say, كسب الحلال أشد من نقل الجبل إلى الجبل. To earn halal is more difficult than moving one mountain to the other. So halal, risk and sustenance. The amal for today is to give sadaqah in secrecy. Abdul Aziz Ibn Abi Rawad used to say, three things are from the treasures of Jannah. Kitman ul marad, hide in your sickness. Kitman ul musibah, hide in concealing your difficulty. And kitman ul sadaqah. Hide in your charity. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the of making amal wa akhiru da'wana. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen.